Hi, I'm Vince Mickens. Welcome back to part two of my three-part series on space architecture and becoming a space architect. As I mentioned in part one, the three interviews that I did with the two aerospace professionals from NASA's Johnson Space Center and the director of the Master of Science in Space Architecture program, Sasakawa International Center for Space Architecture at the University of Houston's Cullen College of Engineering. Boy, that's a mouthful. Where to say the least, riveting and incredibly insightful about this very unique field in space exploration. So you heard from Dr. Robert Howard, the Habitability Domain Lead at the NASA Habitability Factories Branch and co-lead of the Center for Design and Space Architecture at NASA Johnson Space Center. Now it's time to check out this conversation with a representative of the new generation of aspiring young aerospace professionals, Ms. Claire Lucky. You have a kind of an interesting path, at least an interesting major in school uh, for your undergrad. Uh, if, I, if I have it correct, you were uh, space weather engineering. So yeah. let's start with, tell us what that is <laughs> and then tell yeah. us how that happened. Yeah, so obviously that's a very specific um, degree program. Uh, the program itself is very small. Um, but when I got to the University of Michigan, I actually wanted to do chemical engineering. Um, that's what I had my mindset on when I when I got there. Um, and I knew that I wanted to do a minor in astrophysics and astronomy. So after my freshman year, uh, right before I actually declared my major officially, my advisor was like, hey, you know, I don't think that chemical engineering and uh, astrophysics together are really going to get you where you want to go. Have you heard of the... At the time, it was the Atmospheric, Oceanic, and Space Sciences um, program, and space weather was within that. And so I said, yeah, you know, that sounds pretty cool. Um, I've never heard of it, but it sounds pretty cool. Uh, and so thanks to her, I guess that, that's how I got started in space weather. Um, and so just to kind of explain, I guess, more so what space weather is. What space is, weather is, you took the words yeah. right out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, so space weather has to do with understanding the space environment. So like solar physics, um, solar storms, all that, um, the radiation coming from the, the sun, um, and then things like galactic cosmic rays and just the cosmic microwave background. So understanding the space environment, it's not weather per se, although there were, there are some meteorologists in that program or in that department as well, but space weather focuses on the space environment and what we call weather uh, coming from the sun. Yeah, and which makes total sense. I even remember some of that from science days, but let me go back for a minute because chemical engineering, but with a hint of interest in space. So take me back when you were younger before college and where did this all come from? You know, I don't know if I can pinpoint it exactly where it came from. Um, I was good at chemistry. I enjoyed it. Um, I do. So I'm thinking way back to middle school, actually, I remember being in this after school program called like future cities, I think is what it was called. And a bunch of my friends, we just decided to join the future cities club. And one of the, the challenge for that year. So the concept of the program is like a bunch of middle schoolers compete to solve some problem that they've decided for that year. And it's like designing a city. It's almost like not quite SimCity, but designing a city. And that particular year, the challenge was to design a city on Mars. And we didn't do super well, but I, <laughs> I remember really enjoying that program. Um, and so it's- You really found it fascinating. Yeah. Um, and so fast forward to now when I work on the Mars architecture team, kind of doing not that, but very close to very that. Updated it's always cool City. to get. <laughs> yeah, it's always cool to um to think back on that. But uh yeah, like I said, I was good at chemistry and I when I <laughs> freshman year, I mean I didn't really know what was going on. I just got there. Um, but I knew that I wanted to I had an interest in space, I had an interest in planetary sciences, and I wanted to back then, um, do something with like the formation of planets and chemistry. And so that's, that's how I rationalized it in my mind, um, yeah. making those two work. Yeah. So um, 
anybody in the family, your mom or dad or anybody have a similar background or any type of engineering or, or background that's related to what you do? I, I'm just digging back to see where, yeah. where it might come um, from. Where'd no, you grow up? neither of my parents are engineers. Um, my grandfather actually used to work uh, on aircraft way back in i i would be remiss if i tried to pick the year i don't know was um, he like he a maintenance technician or something yeah he was a maintenance technician on aircraft okay um, military or civilian um he was in the military but i don't know if he worked on the aircraft i don't know if he worked on military aircraft okay gotcha yeah. so 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 some of the technical might have come all the way from from back then yeah, maybe it's just in my DNA. I don't know. Yeah. So you 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 took you did this undergrad and everything and you really liked it. And where did that translate to? Um, because you, you mentioned it, but where did it actually translate to you saying, you know, I want to do this graduate? How did you even find out about the graduate program for space architecture? Yeah. So um another aside, when I was younger, I wanted to be an architect. Um, I've always kind of enjoyed design and, you know, when you're young, you're, you're trying a lot of things out, you know, you're, you're just, I want to try this. Sure. Um, Which is great. So, I mean, uh, talking yeah. out, figuring it out. And was this also middle school or even earlier? Um, Your interest in architecture. In high school. In high school, I took like a art history class that I really loved um and I've always been like good at drawing and designing um and so I actually I got into another school for architecture and so it was between the University of Michigan's uh, engineering program and Carnegie Mellon's architecture program mm. and I actually I got a scholarship to the University of Michigan so I was like well yeah I'm gonna go where the money is <laughs> <laughs> and your mom and dad were like yeah you're going to University yeah they're like Michigan. yeah you're gonna stay here <laughs> <laughs> no but that's what an interesting path. You know, it's it's kind of important. I like talking about this on this show because a lot of the viewers, both at the student level and parents and and even teachers and everything, um, it's it's good for them to hear the different paths that uh, someone like yourself has taken. Uh, you're not alone. There are so many students that um, are trying to figure things out, have ideas of what they think they like. What it does sound like to me is that you kind of went with your interest and passion, even though you weren't sure where it was going to take you um, mm -hmm. and, and then figured it out along the way. Um, so, so you, yeah, you know, I, I always get this question, like we've had interns um, at work and they're always kind of like, Oh, you know, how did you get to where you're going? What should I do from here? Um, and I try and tell them not to overthink it because there's no way for you to, plan every single step you right. know you set the intention I said hey I want to work at NASA I had no idea how I was going to get to NASA um but it had been a goal of mine for a long time and so you kind of since just have high to, school or college um since high school I did a so I did lots of summer programs so I did a bunch of engineering programs from I think seventh grade through the end of high school at the University of Michigan, their summer program for engineering. And then my senior year or the, the summer going into my senior year, I did a summer program at the Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. MIT. Um, doing actually in that program, I did an architecture project. Um, so, but all the pieces in hindsight seem like they go together, but going forward, I, you, you don't really know. Um, right. And so I like to tell people, just follow what you're interested in. There are so many different ways to get where you want to go. And if you speak to literally anyone at NASA, you're going to hear a different story from every single person. They started here and they went here and did this and that. Um, so true. So, yeah, it, it's it's difficult to pinpoint. There's, there's no like step by step. Here is how you get to where you're going. Here's here's my intention of where I want to get. Here's what I can do right now. And I'm going to just follow it until I get to where I'm going. So a space architecture, specifically a space architecture graduate program. Um, 
there's only one in the United States. And, and pretty much uh, I was, I think I was corrected uh, in talking with um, Olga saying that it was the only one in the world. So how does a young lady like yourself at University of Michigan with your major um, discover that this, this opportunity for a very, yeah. very unique major? Yeah, sorry, I completely went on the side. Oh, that's question. okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> what you went on the side is what what our viewers need to hear anyhow. So <laughs> I was more than happy to to hear that from you. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I actually the end of my senior year in college, I kind of didn't know where I wanted to go. Um, I knew I wanted to work at NASA, but I didn't think that with my like current experience because I didn't do I did a lot of research in undergrad but I didn't do any internships and so I wasn't sure how I'd be able to like get into NASA so working at NASA or getting an actual position is sometimes really hard because they don't usually have a lot of positions open um but I knew that I wanted to do something in the space industry and I knew I wanted to work with astronauts and so I think I was probably just in a lab late at night trying to figure out a project I was working on. And I was like, you know, I really want to work in the space industry and I want to work where the astronauts are. And so I said, I went to Google and said, hey, where are the astronauts? <laughs> where do the astronauts train? And they said, Johnson Space <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> simple stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and Johnson Space Center. Okay. And so I kid you not, I said, okay, I'm going to move to Houston. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend just on a whim moving across the country. If Up you and moving. Don't yeah. have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I I searched space. I searched, I think I might have just searched like space and architecture together in the same field. And the program that I ended up getting into was the one that came up. Um, so it I said, okay, and what's want- interesting, not I, I'm sorry, but I wanted to inter- in, interject. What's interesting about that is space architecture is a relatively new term. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's space architecture has been around since the beginning of space exploration, as I've discussed with the other guests. But being labeled as space architecture has been probably in, only in the last ten years or so. So the fact that you were able to Google it and it popped for <laughs> you, uh, that that probably helped a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I definitely Googled my way to NASA. No. <laughs> um, but so yeah, you saw I, the school I, pop up on Google? Yeah, I saw the school. I saw the program. And I thought, this is perfect. Because I think even though I hadn't done architecture in undergrad, um, I knew I still had the passion for like art and design. Um, and I was really trying to figure out ways to meld those two interests. Um, and so I was really glad that, that that program popped up. And hearing a lot of people who were in my class say the same thing, like, yeah, I just Googled it and it I had never heard of it. I didn't know for sure that that was a thing. Um, it was, I mean, it was reassuring that <laughs> it wasn't the wrong way to find out about the program, but I'm glad that I did that random Google. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's pretty cool, actually, um, that that you did it that way. Um, it, but it, it also speaks to your focus. So what's interesting to me is you had all of these variants that came into play and you have now I mean, well, you, at the time you you found this school and you got into the program. Tell us what it was like going through this program that you weren't familiar with before you applied for it. Yeah, so um, it was actually the only graduate program that I applied to, which is scary to think about in hindsight, but I was determined. Uh, It was the only grad program that I applied to because it really fit my interests and what I thought I wanted to do. Uh, And then when I got here, I met everyone else in the program. It's pretty small. I think there might have been 15 or 20 people in my cohort. Um, and it was split. So there's a huge diversity of like backgrounds in terms of who, like maybe half the people were architects by trade. So like they had gone to school for architecture. They had been working as architects. They could design, they could do like all the 
diagrams for a building, which I could not do. Um, and then there were people who were engineers. So I think we had a couple of mechanical engineers, maybe some aerospace. We had one physicist. So there is, if you've ever <laughs> sat in a room with engineers and architects discussing anything on how to design anything or plan anything, you'll know that they think very differently. Like, Absolutely. One is very, very, very different. One is very um, creative in terms right. of design and the other is very concrete. And this goes this way and this attaches to this and that, that, that <laughs> yes. description. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of architects will say, Oh, let's do this. And engineers will go, we can't physically do that. <laughs> the, the laws of nature are not on your side. You can't do that. Um, but I, I really loved that dynamic because it, it helped you change your way of thinking. Um, and it really helped. I'd say architects design more with the human in mind first right whereas yeah. Yeah. engineers are more of okay this is methodical we'll get to the human later what's um, and what's practical and then you right. that, what you add to that we're talking space and the effects of of space travel and all of those times or or being on a on a uh, celestial uh body as as uh dr Benova like to say um right but but the the effect of that so that comes into play too and and i i think you make a great point that the human factor which uh everybody i've talked to about this uh that's that's a major consideration uh and mixing that and making that work uh yeah has to be very interesting yeah and that's that's like central to what dr howard actually does um he's very focused on the on human-centric design and you know how do we we're, if we're sending people, we have to think about the people first. Um, and so it definitely helps change your mind frame when you're thinking in that way, as opposed to thinking of like a rover or, um, you know, hardware. Keeping humans alive in space is a, is a full-time job. It, <laughs> and and an important one at that. <laughs> full-time <laughs> to do that. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, um, so as you were as you dove into this graduate program of space architecture uh, and we're going through it, did it even feel better and better as you, as you did the different aspects of it, um, you know, heading towards uh, getting that degree? Yeah. So I think in the beginning, I mean, just as the beginning of anything, you, you have a vague idea of where you're going, what you want to do, but as you work through it, work towards it, it, kind of materializes and you know comes to a clear idea and so I'm trying to like not go super duper in depth with like what I worked on but ultimately my project was about how do we plan for Mars missions um, how do we go from initial outposts to these huge grandiose cities that you see like um not going to name any names, but some people, you know, they love to show the images of these huge Martian cities. And, you know, if you've got like greenery and we've got plants and houses and all this very Earth-like civilization on another planet. Um, but the reality is that we're not even at step zero right now, right? We haven't gotten humans to Mars yet. And so my, my project was how do we get from A to Z. What are all of the steps that we need to build? What kind of infrastructure is that going to require? Um, and so throughout the program, it, it's it's definitely iterative. It's like, is this, am I doing this right? Does this make sense? Do I want to go this direction? Or no, maybe this isn't the right way, go the other direction. Um, but I think uh, Dr. Bonova does a really good job of helping folks think through their process and think about how they're going to get to where they're going to get. So I really enjoyed uh, that program. And it fed right into what I'm doing now. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how, how after you graduated with the graduate degree in space architecture, um, how did that transition you to what you are doing now? Yeah, so I started working. So I graduated in 2019 uh, and I got a job offer in 2019 to come work for a contractor called Barrios Technology. Um, and what they support, 
Uh, yeah, so they support, well, they do a number of different things as a contractor, but the project or the, the group that I worked in supported the ISS program office. So <clears throat> I did cargo integration, which is like all of the different cargo vehicles that fly to the ISS to resupply, um, resupply pretty much everything that the astronauts need above, I mean, aboard the ISS. So uh, my group worked on working with all the different hardware providers, the people who are um, trying to get science experiments to the ISS, everything from food to clothing for the astronauts, worked with those folks who provide all of those um, different aspects, and then the vehicle providers, so Northrop Grumman, Cygnus, Cargo Vehicle, um, SpaceX, um, working with them to integrate the cargo into their vehicles to make sure that things fly safely to the ISS. And so that was a really interesting, it was, <clears throat> excuse me, I wouldn't call it an aside because it, I was at NASA, um, but it, it wasn't related to space architecture, but it gave me a really great understanding of um, how I got, or, or it gave me a really great understanding of like the structure of NASA and all the different um, parts within Johnson Space Center specifically. Got you. And so tell us what you do now. Tell us about, about the job that I have to at, literally look at to, to <laughs> remember how to say it. Yeah. Mission analysts and integrated assessments and then the Mars architecture team. What, what does all of that mean? Yeah. So the Maya group, the first long name that you said, um, they do, or we do, <laughs> um, mission, I wouldn't say architecture, um, but all the Artemis missions. So we just flew Artemis one last year, the end of last year. Right. Um, unmanned. And so, I'm sorry. It was unmanned to the moon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To the moon. Yeah. So our, our Artemis initiative going back to the moon, um, the Maya group works to define what those missions should be like um, what the, Trajectory should be for the flight. Um, are we making the right, I guess, it's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> I've never had to actually explain it out loud. Um, just, just a general explanation. Remember, most of the people yeah. watching are, are not, you know, familiar. So just, just. Yeah. A, uh, an, so, an easy, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Maya provides assessments about the, mission plan for Artemis missions. Um, and so it gets a lot of down in the weeds, like trajectory work, um, but I'd say overall, we, we are working to inform the architectures of the Artemis missions, Artemis missions, <clears throat> excuse me. And then on the Mars architecture team, so Artemis is obviously real time going to the moon um, but the Mars architecture team thinks further down the road. And so we've got this moon to Mars initiative, right? We want to use the moon as a test bed to get us to Mars. And so the Mars architecture team works to define, okay, what should a Mars mission look like? If we're sending four crew to Mars, what are they going to do when they get there? How are they going to get there? How do we keep them alive and healthy and well enough to do the things that we need them to do when they get there? Uh, and so the Mars architecture team takes a overarching look at what a Mars mission could reasonably be, should reasonably be, and then um, ask all of those correct or ask all of those questions so that we're making sure that we're looking for all the answers before we actually go. Right. And I, and I actually looked it up, uh, some information about it. NASA is pretty thorough about uh, the information they put out about what they're doing. And, and so I saw that the, the moon to Mars, uh, the objectives are really broken into four categories, which is what you're talking about. Science and then transportation and habitation, um, the infrastructure, um, lunar, both lunar and Mars, and then operations. That, that sound about right to you? That sounds way better than I put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I wasn't trying to upstage you. I just, uh, it, 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 it's a lot of area to cover, actually, which is, I think, what your point is. 
Um, yeah. And, and again, the teams for these these uh, these type of missions and initiatives are pretty significant in, t- in, in terms of the, the number of different types of people involved. And the reason that I actually bring that up, Claire, is that I like to point out that there are a ton of opportunities to, so we're talking about space architecture specifically, and we've mentioned a little bit about engineering and things like that, but there are so many different um, opportunities and, and things that can be done within that. Uh, and one of the things that was pointed out by Dr. Bonova uh, when we talked was that there are, um, there's going to be the industry, uh, the space exploration, I should say, is, is growing leaps and bounds, pun intended. And, uh, <laughs> and, and that, that's going to open up so many doors. So for somebody that's in middle school or high school, and they're kind of, they're interested in space exploration, but they don't know you know, when, where, how, or why they, they're just trying to figure it out. Like, like you did uh, want to let them know that, yeah, there's whatever your interest is. And you brought this up earlier. And I think that's really important. Whatever your interest is, whatever it is that you like and that, that you're drawn to probably it's applicable um, in some facet or form in space exploration. Would you agree with that? I would, <clears throat> I would wholeheartedly agree with that. I can't say it enough. Um, there's a place for every type of knowledge base at NASA. Um, we've got doctors, you know, at JSC, keeping the astronauts healthy, doing studies on how to keep astronauts healthy. Um, engineers, of course. And I know people like to think of engineering specifically when they think of NASA, but there are so many different people who are not engineers who are still integral to um, human space flight. Right. They're a technician or something like that. No, with, with I mean, even beyond that, okay. let's say like maybe you really like audiovisual AV. I, you know, I don't know. Great, great um, point. Great example. We have, we have acoustic testing for, you know, they do acoustic testing for things that go into space to make sure that the vibe vibrations don't interrupt the 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 hardware right you might not be an engineer maybe you really enjoyed music and you know a lot about acoustic testing there's there's a place for every interest because ultimately we're sending humans to space and humans are dynamic humans are not just engineers humans are not just scientists humans are not just doctors humans are humans um and so if you set the intention you say I want to work at NASA, but I don't know how yet. And you're in middle school, follow the things that interest you because ultimately the things that interest you are going to be the things that you put time into to get really excellent at, to really enjoy. And you'll find a way to get to, to, to NASA or to anywhere within the space industry. In the interim, while you're in middle school or high school, <laughs> or when yeah. you go into college, uh, but let's say middle school and high school, what, while you're th- uh, doing what you just suggested, what also should you be doing education-wise? What, what's, what's best in terms of, you know, studying and habits and things like that? I, I'm always going to be a proponent for math. <laughs> um, you should get good at math, honestly. And, and I mean, I haven't done middle school or high school math in a while, but that's going to be kind of an invaluable foundation. Even if you don't end up doing something in mathematics, learning math and understanding math changes your brain to think a specific way. Um, Math and science, STEM, of course, there's also, I think STEAM, now they add arts into STEM. Which I like, I think it's very important because that's the creative side. And I, I think it gives you some balance and you're not just grinding the books uh, yeah, you know, the hard stuff. Yeah. And a, a lot of engineers are like some of the most creative people that I know. So the, the create, the creative mind is, is not just for, you know, art specifically. Um, and let's see, middle school and high school, what should you be doing now? I would recommend, well, and this is also just because that's what I was fortunate enough to do. Um, look at summer programs. Uh, I know it kind of sucks to think about giving up your summer 
in middle school or high school. But no, but if, if you're I focused, I think that's a really good it. point. Yeah, I, I and I'm a little biased with it because I just did a show about aviation summer camps. Yeah, uh, and and it was pretty pretty interesting. <laughs> and I only uh, featured three camps, and there are a ton of aviation summer camps aerospace type of summer camps. A lot of them are at universities that are aviation centric. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, there's space camp in Alabama um, that uh, is really popular and, uh, and, and I've heard nothing but good things about. Yeah, so I, I definitely would recommend that. Um, even if nothing else, you know what, you, you get an idea of what you do enjoy and what you don't enjoy. Um, and it's, it's worth it, I think. Yeah. I, I don't ever look back and say, man, I wish I hadn't gone to camp in, you know, in middle school. I, I never feel that way. So definitely look into that. And there are a lot of people, at least the, the program that I did at the University of Michigan, I believe was free. I mean, maybe ask my parents, but I'm pretty sure that it was for the most part free. Um, and it was free a to you. Program. Not sure yet. Your <laughs> it's parents free to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, verify. Yeah. Um, but it was a three week program. We stayed at the University of Michigan. Um, we did a, an engineering project and I made a lot of friends that I still actually have today. One of my best friends um, I met all the way in seventh grade, eighth grade uh, doing that engineering program. And we went to engineering school at the University of Michigan together. Um, so Neat. I can't say enough good things about that. Yeah, no, no, this is great. This is a great uh, opportunity to hear from you hear from someone young like yourself who has recently experienced this and is still growing in her field and, and that. As we kind of wrap things up, um, and we've touched on it a little bit, what, what are your goals beyond what you're doing at this point? Uh, or what do you think you want to do? And also, how do you see the future as it relates to these exciting times of us going back to the moon and, and, and venturing to Mars eventually? Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It's kind of an exciting time. Um, people like to compare what's going on currently to like the very first, the start of the space race uh, in the 50s, 60s. Um, and I think that there's a lot of opportunity right now because we've got a lot of commercial players also, you know, adding fuel to, to wanting to go to space. Um, so for me, I mean, I actually just started in, well, I can't say just started, but I've only been in this particular position for like nine months, nine or 10 months now. Brand um, spanking new. Yeah, pretty shiny, pretty new. So still, you know, super excited, still learning a lot. It's drink from the fire hose every day. Um, but I'm really most excited about actually getting people to Mars. Like I... I, it would be just amazing if that happens in my lifetime. Um, and I think would you go? I wouldn't be the first person to go. <laughs> oh, you want like, to send first. a few other people out and see send, how it works out I'd first? Send, <laughs> yeah, I'd send people way braver than me. Um, <laughs> but I wouldn't go. That's you're um, being honest. I can appreciate that. You know, and I think more people say that than you'd realize. And, and because... It, on the Mars architecture team, part of our like thought process is to think of all the things that could go wrong. And so if you're on my end and you're seeing all the different things that could, you know, okay, we haven't thought about this yet or haven't thought about this yet. Um, it's, it's going to be a feat of human ingenuity for sure. Um, and so I, I don't know if I would be first. I'm not like brave enough but <laughs> <laughs> but you are looking forward to when we are able to send humans to mars and what that's gonna yeah. what that's gonna be all entail and, and that type yeah. Of thing. yeah yeah awesome well it's been a pleasure to chat with you we have run out of time actually we've gone over time but that's okay <laughs> uh because <laughs> no no because you you've shared a lot of valuable insight that i think it's very important for our viewers and listeners to hear uh, about in terms of your own experiences and your 
you know, navigating your way to, to where you are and, and still in that process. And it's, it's a uh, hats off to you. I mean, it's pretty cool um, to go Thank from you. your thoughts from middle and high school to, to your transition in college, to your transition to the graduate program, to now being at NASA. And I, I do want to mention, I, I do have to, to give a shout out to NASA. NASA is really good with information about what they're doing uh, and, and information for young people. So I recommend anybody that's interested in NASA in any way, shape or form to go to, go to their website uh, or just, as you would say, Google your interest <laughs> and just put NASA as part of that Google search and it'll, it'll pop with all kinds of information. Uh, about what's yeah. going on. And if you get specific with things like Artemis and Mars exploration and lunar, you know, exploration and things like that, you'll, you'll find a ton of information. So, and of course you can always. Yeah. And Go sorry, ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, if, there's one more thing, if there's one yeah. more thing I can add. Sure. So NASA has a really robust internship program. And I can't believe that I didn't even mention that I was an intern. <laughs> um, but intern.nasa.gov shameless plug um if you're in middle school and high school take a look at intern.nasa.gov take a look at the projects that are available because that'll give you a real idea of like what what, what someone does on their day-to-day -day, what projects they're interested in what projects they're working on um and you can even tailor your interest to that so definitely yeah. use that as a resource Thank you for mentioning that. I think that's absolutely <laughs> incredible. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, NASA's intern program is pretty robust on a lot of different levels. And as you said, as a middle schooler or high schooler, you know, now's the time to take a look and see what, what they're offering, what the requirements are, you know, when you're qualified for it and then go for it. Um, yeah. and, and the other thing that you would probably add to this too is, uh, don't get discouraged or, you know, uh, if the first thing doesn't go through uh, that you're, you're attempting to do, just stay focused on it and, and keep persevering. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, wishing you the best of luck with everything. And uh, it was a pleasure to have you on and, and talk with you about uh, all, the, all of your, uh, your, uh, your track, your path. And uh, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing your name pop when they're talking about uh, the astronauts that are going to go to Mars and things like that. You'll probably be in that mix somewhere. <laughs> so, Hope so. so. Yeah, for sure. ab absolutely. All right. Well, Claire, it's been a pleasure. Take care of yourself and uh, wish you the best. Thank you. It's great talking to you. You too. Thanks. And that's a wrap for part two. In the next episode, the final of this three-part series, I will talk with Dr. Olga Bonova. Again, she is the director of the Master of Science in Space Architecture program, Sasakawa International Center for Space Architecture at the University of Houston's Cullen College of Engineering. Thanks for joining us and hopefully gaining valuable insight from these informative conversations with very talented and brilliant, I might add, NASA professionals. With every show, I do my best to provide as much exposure as possible to any and everyone who has any interest in literally any aspect of the aviation and aerospace industries. Of course, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, I would ask that you please subscribe. Until next time, take care, stay safe, blue skies, and have a good one.